Hello, and it's another Sunday, which means another review. So, welcome to episode 6 review on the inside. So, first of all, we're going to go straight into the characters, and if you like Connie, guess what? This is Connie's return episode. She's kind of the plot A main character. You also have Virgil. You have also, guess what? Daryl. Yes, I know. The main protagonist finally has something. He's a plot B story. And then you got Kelly, okay? The best thing about these characters is that we get to see Connie and Virgil interact. And they actually, well, they work quite well off each other, okay? Those characters, saying that they basically cannot understand each other. They worked well and you felt like they had some sort of bond from what happened between episode 16 and episode 6 of last and this season. So, it's quite good. And... But, however, Kelly does have some sidekicks going around, like Magna, Rosita, and Carol. And I feel like those three characters have been completely wasted this season. Because all three of those characters have done literally nothing. Okay, Kelly, she has a reason to be in this episode. So she can find Connie. But the other three are just there. I felt like you could replace those three characters with three other characters that probably would have added more to the story. The other three were just there, so Kelly wouldn't be alone. Also, where's Luke? If you're going to find Kelly, why is Luke not involved? Where is Luke? I'm going to have to look up what's happened to the actor who played Luke. Because if because everyone's meant to be family, those five people, okay? This episode would have made sense if Luke went with Kelly. Because Magna went with Kelly, and that made sense. Because Magna and Connie were close, they're like family. Would Magna go f and find Luke and be like, Hey, we need to go find Connie, she might be alive, okay? Where's Luke? His absence is weird. This is an episode that would have needed him. Okay, Luke could have replaced Carol or Rosita because neither of those characters add anything to the story. Luke could have been one of those two, but they didn't bring him. I don't know what's happened to him, but I feel like there's a gap here for Luke and it's it was missed. He should have been here, which is annoying. But that's enough talking about the characters. Let's go talk about the plot. Well, the plot is pretty good. This episode is very well structured, unlike the previous one, which is kind of stuffed and bloated. This one only has three plots. You have the plot A, which is Connie and Virgil trying to deal with something following them and being this big kind of like haunted mansion type thing, which is like horror. It's basically all horror. There's a lot this when you go back to season nine, there was that like death scene in the cornfield. You have that again in this, which is really good. I really like it. And because it, it's all like in this dark, tight, tight corners uh, mansion, it feels very claustrophobic. And it's a very good horror. They got some very good, like, high pitch horror music. It's very good horror, that plot A. It's really good. Like, that's probably the best part of the story. This, like, plot A. And it's like, there's some good shocks and scares. And you're like, what the hell is that? And it's just about them trying to survive whatever's happening, those two characters. Then we go to plot B, which is Daryl. Just. It really starts off quite graphic with Daryl's plot, and you're like, wow. But then you're kind of like, then it kind of answers its question. She's like, is Daryl actually going to do this? Be like, no, he's just all disguised. He's going deep undercover like James Bond. And it's just Daryl trying to get part of the Reapers and trying to convince everyone he's joined while trying to keep Maggie and them lot safe. And then you've got plot C, which could have had any other characters. Luke should have been here. And it's just Kelly trying to find Connie. And that is just kind of like two or three clips throughout. And those three clips work really well together. I feel like the middle one is the only one that isn't connected. But that we needed that episode. We needed that part plot B in this. So I'm okay with it not being connected to the other two plots. Where the other two meet up at the end. I do have to talk about the ending. So be careful there are some slight spoilers. But just before plot A and plot C converge to become one plot. Virgil and Connie just escape the mansion. And... Then Kelly peers up, and then Virgil just literally gets dropped, and they have that big, like, moment where they go, oh, we're hugging, and they just kind of forget what happens to Virgil, and you're like, what's happened to Virgil? What? We don't get any other scene with Virgil, and you're like, okay, just, we have a massive question mark for Virgil, and I don't know why I just kind of ruined it, you're like, okay, I want to, we spent an hour, basically, getting to know this character, and learn to empathize for him, and starting to like him, just for him to disappear at the end of the episode, be like, okay, well... He's not important anymore. That's what I felt like with Virgil. For some reason, I really didn't like that. That's one big issue with this. And with the Daryl one, they kind of just... Daryl one was like a really big cliffhanger, which is like, oh, something might happen. Oh, there's a smiley thing. And you're like, uh... Well, the Daryl one, that cliffhanger was just a bit... just felt a bit weird. You're like, okay. They just... Why is everyone acting like 
little kids when they find out a secret. That's what everyone just felt like for the Daryl one. But moving on to like the pacing, it's got really good pacing. Like the last one felt bloated and it had too much going on and it just kind of ruined it a little. But this one, it worked because you had all the Connie stuff. But I feel like it needed the plot B so you didn't get too much horror and you weren't been desensitized to it. You needed the plot B to like relax from the stress that plot A was giving you. So the plot B worked well of like little downtime before the spikes in horror, which was plot A, which really worked. It was really good. They, it was very well cut together, those two plots. And plot C was so small, it could have been put anywhere, and it worked. The pacing was very fast, it was very good, and it was very enjoyable, because like, you weren't, oh, this one's boring. Oh, it's moving too fast, so I can't comprehend. It was a very good speed, where you were able to digest everything that was happening, which is really good. Okay, so now let's move on to the looks of the episode. Plot B looks normal, plot C looks normal. There's nothing outstanding like there was in episode 3 of this season, which that one just looked gorgeous. This one just kind of looked there. It just looked good. It looked good because it has the new, like, film version of the camera. It looks good, uh, but there's no, like, outstanding looks in this episode. You do have in plot A... The camera does look really good with because it's everything so densely packed and you do feel claustrophobic okay it's very good at making you feel claustrophobic very good at making it feel like a horror movie okay but there's nothing that looks gorgeous in this episode so i think it's time for now the overall one word review and i would say this episode's fantastic it's great pacing i loved the horror bit the, i loved part a plot a was the best bit plot b was just good and plot C made sense. This is a fantastic episode and a must watch. But what do you think? Have you seen it yet? Have you not? Are you excited for this episode? What did you think? I'd like to know. If you want more reviews, there should be something on the screen. And I'll talk to you later. So goodbye peeps.